I'm going to show how the mesh capabilities work with the chatterbox. So I've got four devices in the same cluster, which I've named after my hometown of Bern. Right now, only one device is powered on. Um, so this kind of simulates if everyone else was out of range, or they could be off, it really doesn't matter. It works the same. So I'm going to power on the second device or bring it in range. And what I want to do is send a message from green to pink. And these two are off. These two are on. They are both aware of each other's presence. You can see green sees that Matt is nearby. He's got a great signal. I'm going to send a message to pink. Okay, so first thing it does is it tries to send it directly, as in not using meshing at all. Um, it always does that. That's the first option. That's not going to work because this is powered off. So what we'll see is it gets queued. So it gets queued into Green's mesh cache. There's a distributed mesh cache. Each uh, chatterbox has a piece of it. Um, right now, that message, the only place it exists is in Green's cache. So Green is going to look for any opportunity to push that toward Pink. And it knows Matt sometimes comes into contact with Pink, so um, it decided to forward that on to Matt. Okay, so Matt, you can tell he can't read the message. Uh, the, the packets of the message are encrypted in his cache, so he couldn't read it even, even if he wanted to, even if you hooked this up to your PC or whatever. Uh, but Matt's holding on to it, looking for an opportunity to push it on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on another device here. I forget what this one's name is. But it also comes into contact with Pink once in a while. Joe, okay. So Matt is going to see, I need to get this these packets to Pink. I don't see Pink anywhere. I see Joe. I know Joe sees Pink sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and pass these on to Joe. So meanwhile, Matt is, whoops, screen went off, going to keep a copy of them also. Uh, but he has considered that he's fulfilled his part by holding on to them and also passing them on to at least one person. So Joe's got them now. So I'm going to turn off Matt. So these are all off. The only thing on is Joe. And he's got the message sitting in his cache. So now I'm going to turn on Pink. Maybe Joe uh, drives by Pink's house in his car or I don't know. Somehow they come into contact for... A minute or so and what you'll see is yeah Joe it's all, that was pretty quick already forwarding the message on to pink pink is trying to acknowledge it directly to green that's not gonna work it will have to acknowledge through mesh as well but um, you see it's got the message hi and the acknowledgement uh, that green will get is now sitting in its mesh cache So Pink will look for an opportunity to send that acknowledgement on. And you can see Joe's got it now. Okay, so I'm going to turn off Pink. The only thing on is Joe. Joe's holding on to this acknowledgement and looking for an opportunity to pass it on back. You know what? I'm not going to do that. Let's skip this one and I will just say these two happen to come into contact. Yeah, I had that on for just a split second and Joe saw it, so he's trying to use that one. But no, Joe, you're going to have to send it to green. Okay, and what you saw, I don't know if you saw it there, the uh, green dot was hollow and it filled in. So if you send direct and get an acknowledgement instant, you get a check mark. If you send a message through mesh and the acknowledgement comes back, either direct or through mesh, you'll get your dot filled in. So that tells you that 100% chance Pink got the message and was able to decrypt it and and accept the signature and everything. That acknowledgement is also signed, so it couldn't be faked. None of these guys could fake an acknowledgement from Pink to Green. So that's a quick demo of that.